Flame artists have a particular creative working style, using the desktop reels as the core creative environment. We'll be conforming in a minute, but if we didn't have a conform, we would want to review the media we have just imported. We can copy the clips from our library into the desktop reels. and get an overview of our footage by scrolling through the shots. The original clips are always safely stored in a library. We can also choose to splice all the clips in a reel by right-clicking and selecting Splice Reel, and then selecting the destination reel for the sequence. This would give us a sequence of all the media that we can review and send to the client. We can also cut the sequence in a particular reel by right-clicking over the reel and selecting Cut at each splices, which would give us the individual shots again. We can click in the middle of the clip and drag and drop it into different desktop reel and so organize our media. We can name the reels, rushes sequence, shots, elements, graphics, and so on, and color code them for ease of working. Desktop reels are mirrored in a media panel reels, and vice versa. We can work with collapsed and uncollapsed clips, gesturally edit them. We can cut a clip by swiping downwards at the edge of its frame, discard the unwanted segments by swiping to the bottom of the interface. If we wanted to create a quick edit of our media, we can splice clips together one by one by picking up a clip at the edge of its frame and overlaying it over another clip. These edits are soft edits, marked with a yellow line and not committed, unless we tell Flame to hard commit them by right-clicking and in the contextual menu, selecting hard commit segment or hard commit sequence. We render our work by right-clicking and selecting from the contextual menu, render segment or render sequence. We will now save our current desktop to preserve the state of rails and clips in them. Go to bottom right corner of the screen to rename our desktop to Gestural Editing. We will click Save and the current desktop will be saved to the currently selected library, highlighted by a yellow arrow. If we move clips around or introduce any changes to our desktop, we will have access to this version of the desktop that we saved. At this stage, we should also save our project by clicking on the Flame logo or by using hotkey Ctrl-5. In the timeline, we can change the length of the individual clips, set in and out points, add video and audio transitions, as well as add effects and create comps, which we will cover in the next videos. I will first replace the desktop with the Import Media desktop by dragging and dropping it over the rails, so that we have a clean start. I will then rename the desktop to Timeline Editing and save it. When we are editing in Flame, we are normally, besides a brief, given a storyboard or an animatic as a guide to the story. In our case, we have a Murphy animatic that shows us the storyline and gives us an idea of the director's vision. We will start by going to the media panel, right click, create a new sequence, name it Mophie Edit, create three video tracks, 
and give it a duration of 1500 frames. As we know, the duration of our commercial is 60 seconds. A new tab has appeared above the timeline of our sequence. The tabs of the source clips in the timeline are marked green and the sequences tabs are marked red. We will drag and drop the animatic into the sequence. In the timeline, we have all the editorial tools like Insert, Overwrite and Replace. The hotkeys associated with the editing tools are displayed next to the tools. Edit audio and video or edit video only is relevant just to gestural editing. We can change our viewing mode to Source Sequence View that shows us the source clip on the left and the sequence on the right. The first thing we should do is to add markers on the cuts in the animatic so that we know where to drop our shots. This is just so we can get a rough first cut and finesse later. I could have downloaded Scene Detection Cut Detective plugin for Flame, but this is a short commercial and it's good to know how one can do it manually. I could have also set in and out points. This is just an alternative way of doing it. I am navigating through the sequence using the standard J play backwards, K stop and L play forwards keys and roughly marking the cuts in the animatic. Now that I have marked the animatic, we will change the color space of our viewer to log C so that we are not viewing flat images as some media has been shot in Aria Alexa in log C and we haven't tagged it or converted it into our working color space. We can select shots one by one and drop them into the sequence. The markers in the animatic tell us the length they should be. Of course, that is just a rough cut and we can adjust the length of the shots and cuts later. Once we have dropped in all the shots, we can change to trim view that gives us a closer view of the cuts. We can trim using Alt E, trim forward using period, trim backward using comma, slip using Alt S and slide using Alt D. We can navigate through the sequence in the timeline or in a desktop reel by using up and down arrows. If the sequence is layered, you can use page down and page up to look through the layers. As we move through, you can see the desktop reel and timeline sequence are in sync with each other. The benefit of this is that the reel gives you a visual representation of the sequence in the timeline. Media is displayed as frames on the desktop reels or as segments in a timeline. If we click Space C for Storyboard, we will see the first frame of each clip in a sequence and get an overview of the clips in the edit. We can extract the clip from the sequence by navigating to the clip or by clicking on G and a pop-up menu with an option to enter a frame number you wish to go to will be displayed. Press M and tap on the reel above. The clip will be copied to the reel above with its handles. If you don't want to see the handles, we click Alt M instead of M. We should now name and save the desktop. In the next video, we will look at conforming in Flame. For more in-depth tutorials on the individual Flame tools, please go to Autodesk Flame Learning Channel on YouTube.